Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays, uh, my collection. Today I'm going to show some movies from my uh, vast uh, collection of movies. It seems like I've got a lot of movies. Um, it seems like every month I buy a couple more, a couple more. You know, it's been, I've been collecting for 20 years now, DVDs and Blu-rays. So I've, I've acquired a lot of movies over the years. And uh, I have all kinds of different genres of movies. I have everything from silent movies all the way to the newest movies on 4K. But one of my most favorite genres of movies uh, took place in the 70s, mostly. Maybe in the early part of the 80s, maybe a little part of the 60s, just a little in the very ends and the beginnings of each decade. But mostly the 70s was the year of, or the decade of exploitation movies. I know I'm not saying that right. Exploitation movies, there it go. Uh, which included black exploitation, which included just all kinds of subgenres of ex exploitation movies which just keep going and going into all different directions but one of my most favorite one is kind of like the like the jail uh genre exploitation movies you know like people being thrown in jail it's kind of low budget movies or b movies they're not you know super like they're bad movies because they're low budget but they're just more you know, there was more freedom in the 70s for, for filmmaking and um, a lot of stuff like that. I mean, there's subgenres like the exploitation, black exploitation with karate and kung fu blended in. You got the jail stuff. You got the just trashy cinema, stuff like that. But anyways, black exploitation is probably my favorite of, of the whole genre. I mean, I do like like the kind of the jail prison type movies uh, that were made back then, um, especially the crime movies, which um, a lot of the black, black exploitation movies included um, kind of a crime element. Usually people were pimps and hookers and drug dealers and private eyes and mercenaries and kung fu people and just guy trying to people trying to break out of a situation and stuff um which you know kind of caused a lot of um you know negativeness put on those things like you know the black people were being shown in a horrible light and stuff you know and but really if you look at it what the directors and the actors and everybody was trying to do with those movies were to to portray themselves as the white kind of audiences do you know like you got the white private eye you got the white gang you got the you know what i mean like the mafia boss is a, you know an italian guy like the godfather and some of their movies they kind of turned it on it's turned movie genres on it on their head and they came up with some really good movies um but if you're curious about exploitation exploitation movies and black exploitation movies, Google them, do some research on them. There's good and bad. I mostly like the good, the really good stuff. So this is probably going to be maybe a three or four episode uh, series because um, I have a lot of movies. Um, but I want to start off, this was part one, I, would, I, I guess you could say, and I'm going to show some really good movies um, that really demonstrates what was good about black exploitation. Now, the first movie I'm going to show you is called The Mac. Now, this is a super cool movie, very influential on a lot of rap uh, people in the future, rappers uh, sampling, you know, stuff from the movie. I know Dr. Dre sampled a lot of stuff from this movie. Um, let's see, this came out in, I think, 73. Now, it wasn't one of the first movies, but it was, it, this one has a big cult following, call, cult following. And um, th that's one thing I could say. This all this whole genre is a you know cult movie now. Everybody loves these. You know, there's huge fandoms of these of these movies and stuff. So, so when this came out, this was um, this was uh, let's see, 
It, well, it stars a guy named Mac, Max Julian. Now, he was a writer of another movie I'm going to show you um, in the future, a movie called Cleopatra Jones. And now he wrote that. It, it was a hit movie at the time, so they were like, hey, what do you want to do? You know, you want to star in your own movie? You want to write another movie and we're going to make your movie and stuff? And he was like, yeah, I think I want to star in a movie. So he starred in this movie, Max Julian, and uh, this was directed by Michael Campus. Now, this edition, this is a DVD edition. It's not on Blu-ray, and it definitely needs an upscale to a Blu-ray because, you know, watching this recently, you can tell it really needs to be restored a little bit. Now, this is a good uh, New Line Cinema uh, release from the, like 2003 or something. So this was probably the 30th anniversary of it. Uh, but just to name some people that are in this movie, Max Julian, Richard Pryor is in this movie, which he, he's really cool. Uh, Don Gordon, Carol Speed, Roger Mosley. Uh, it's got music by Willie Hutch. Now I'll come back to Willie Hutch in a little bit because he, he plays into the music of some of the other uh, movies that were made during that decade, but yeah, it's it's a good movie. Um, uh, Max Julian plays a guy that's like you know he was just kind of getting into trouble. He you know as a young young guy, he didn't know where he was going. His dad had died, um, and he was just like getting mixed up with the wrong people. Him and Richard Pryor were like best friends, and they da da da. Anyways, he gets kind of trapped in a in a situation of a botched robbery or something and he uh, gets caught and gets took to jail uh, put in jail for five years and once he gets out he's like man I'm gonna turn my life around I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this I'm gonna make money I'm da, da, da. but anyways he does he brings he rises to the top to where he's the biggest uh, pimp in the city now, you can't take a lot of this stuff serious. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just kind of silly, especially in this movie. Max Julian just has a charisma about him. He's got that smile where you can just tell watching this movie is kind of tongue-in-cheek at times. Uh, but anyways, he rises to the top. It gets the interest of former crime people he was mixed up in. It gets the um, attention of crooked cops that are constantly figuring into the crime and shaking down people in the city. He gets the attention of his mother, his, his brother. His brother's trying to do good. His mother just wants him to do, do right and everything. And he's trying to give her everything that she, you know, deserves, like a better house and a better neighborhood and all this stuff. So not to give it all away, but it's a great movie. Uh, super cool. I, I look forward to a Blu-ray of this one day. Um, Richard Pryor is really good and he's really funny as always. Um, if you grew up in the 80s, you can't can't help but know who Richard Pryor is and um, everything. But yeah, the Mac. Look it up. Check it out. Next up, I got a movie called Tick, Tick, Tick. Now this stars... Uh, uh, Jim Brown. Now I got a lot of movies by Jim Brown. He's he's one of my probably favorite actors from back in the day. Um, I mean, he was in all kinds of movies like The Dirty Dozen, uh, the movie movies like The Slams, um, all kinds of movies. Um, he even came out with his own like I guess you could say black exploitation superhero of sorts. When he plays Slaughter, he plays a character Slaughter in a few movies. But anyways, Tick, Tick, Tick is more of a drama. Um, I'm, I'm including this in this in this because it's kind of uh, you know it's got the whole thing where you got the racist town. Um, he's he runs for sheriff in an all white town basically. You got the white people on one side and black people on the other side, and. Um, it stars George Kennedy. George Kennedy, likable guy. He's he he's the former white sheriff. Now they voted, and Jim Brown won, and so he becomes the first black sheriff in this town. So of course he's going to run into all kinds of situations. You know the town sees that he's serious, and what happens is George Kennedy ends up having to partner with him and become one of his deputies to kind of help fight this town and what all the issues that's going on in this town um 
So yeah, it's it's an interesting movie from the 70s. I believe this thing came out in uh, 69, actually. So this is kind of the, the end part of the 60s. This would be a pre-black exploitation movie. But yeah, it's a great movie. Um, Jim Brown, great actor. Former football player, former army, broke into movies. So yeah. The Now the next movie, again, this is not a... This wouldn't be considered a black exploitation movie in the, you know, in the uh, line, along the lines of like the Mac and stuff. This was considered very controversial, uh, very exploitation, uh, very just low taste. It would never get made these days. It would never be made. It, it's such a crazy movie. Uh, Mandingo. Now, this movie was a big influence on Quentin Tarantino's movie. Uh, Django Unchained, where it shows the um, the big the big you know fighting guys of uh, you know the slaves that they would train to be a fighter. You know he was like the biggest slave. He was the strongest guy, and he he was worth a lot of money back then. But anyways, this movie is just so controversial. It's so racist. It's so crazy at times. You can hardly believe it got made because some of the people that are in it are big time stars. Um, this was made in 1975. Um, it stars people like James Mason, you know, famous English actor that was already a veteran of acting by this time. He plays a southern plantation owner, if you can believe that. Uh, it's got uh, Susan George, uh, Perry King that would go on in the 80s and be part of some TV shows. Y you'll definitely recognize Perry King. And uh, this was directed by Richard Fleischer. Now, Richard Fleischer is an A-list director. You know, he starred in, a, you know, or directed a lot of good movies. You know, big... Uh, big name movies and stuff but the producer on this is uh dino uh de la, uh oh god i always miss his name up dino de la Laurinaitis, who you know would go on to make flash gordon and stuff he's an italian producer he's been known to just to make just all kinds of crazy controversial type movies over the years um but anyways, he would, he would get this project together. It's based on a famous book, a very popular play and book and everything at, around the same time. Um, music by Maurice, Maurice Jar, who would, did the music for Lawrence of Arabia, amongst other things. He was an A-list uh, composer at that time. He's involved in the movie, so he's got all, all this good stuff going in it. And watching it, I, I caught this movie on uh, Amazon Prime. And I was like, man, I'm going to check this movie out before I buy it. I've heard all this stuff about it. I'm going to watch it. And I loved it. It was like, man, this is just so crazy. It's so bonkers. And it, you can see all the influence from this movie in the stuff like Django Unchained. And you, you can tell. It's just one of those movies that I always heard. Mandingo. And um, it... It just goes, you know, Susan George plays this, you know, the very southern wife of Perry King. Uh, Perry King is uh, half crippled from Civil War or something. He's got a bad leg. Uh, she ends up having a baby by the Mandingo guy. Um, I forgot his name. And it's just all this, it's a high drama. And it's just so, it would never be made these days. So it's just crazy. Blu-ray's pretty good. Uh, you can find it cheap and everything. So, Mandingo. Now, some of these movies, I'm going to say, they're kind of controversial. And that's why they were kind of known as exploitation, exploitation movies back in the day. And then you had the genre black explo exploitation. Um, a really good one um, that I found, um, found this back, in the, back a while ago. For, this is my first and only Vinegar Synd Syndrome movie. Uh, it's a label, a boutique Blu-ray label called Vinegar Syndrome. Now, what they do is they, they find old, you know, classic movies from the 70s, you know, all different genres. Uh, they pretty much, they don't clean them up. They just kind of scan them as is. So if the prints, the color is off in it, it's got speckles and dust and all kinds of stuff on, on, on the print. And you can see it all on there. 
it, it's to make the movie look like it is. You know, like if you were just going to play it in a theater with all of it in just whatever condition it is. Which, you know, it's kind of a curious concept, right? So I guess it works for them because they're a very popular, you know, kind of underground Blu-ray label. So this is a movie I got. This is actually a double feature. This is a movie, one of the best uh, black exploitation gangster type movies back in the day. Pimp, gangster, The Candy Tangerine Man. Now this is also on the flip side on, on the special features. It's got a, another one called Lady Coco uh, starring, you know, um, uh, Lola Falana, which was a famous actress, singer at the time. And she, she plays kind of a kind of a um uh it's kind of a crime thriller that's maybe that's why i should say there are a lot of the crime thriller movies and that's what i really like uh, but anyways she, she plays a um woman who just got out of prison and she has to testify against this mob guy uh, pretty good movie pretty good but the main the main thing here is the candy tangerine man now this is crazy I, I watched a little bit of this with my wife one night before she fell asleep she usually doesn't watch these she falls asleep but she caught the first part of it the opening song the candy tangerine man it's got this whole crazy thing going on with it and um he's got this car he's got this two-tone car it's got it's uh like an orange and yellow old Rolls, Rolls Royce that he drives, and it, it's just crazy. Um, the guy, uh, John Daniels, uh, play is the Baron. He's known as the Baron. He's a no-nonsense pimp who cruises the streets in his signature tangerine Rolls Royce, taking on rival pimps, pushers, and the, and the man, okay? Baron uses his cunning, his intelligence to elude the authorities and um, this is a very grim, very subversive movie uh, directed by a guy named Matt uh, Simber or Kimber. And um, there, there's a cool little interview with him on there. But yeah, this is a great, great little movie. I know this, this was, oh, this one was actually scanned uh, on a 2K and restored. But um, Lady Coco is actually not. Uh, but yeah, that's 1974, Candy Tangerine Man, 1975 for Lady Coco. So yeah, if you can find this for cheap, uh, pick it up. It's it's worth it. Or I think you may be able to find it on Amazon Prime if you have that uh, streaming service. Check it out uh, for free. So yeah, very interesting. But being on vinegar syndrome, it can it can. Uh, if you look on eBay, you may find it for a high price because it's very, very valuable on the, you know, the market because they go out of print and they, you know, they're not making any more copies of it. So what's out there is out there and they become high, com high commodity. Um, next up, th this was a movie that, uh, this was released, um, around 2001, 2002, two, around in there. Um, uh, maybe in 2000 when we're, when did he do this? Well, Quentin Tarantino released this, about a handful of movies. Uh, he released them on his Rolling Thunder Films uh, signature, where uh, he was he re-released these to some theaters. Uh, they weren't shown everywhere, but in a lot of theaters, you know, midnight movies and stuff. And he showed them at a theater. He owns his own theater in Beverly Hills, um, the New Beverly, and. Uh, these were very popular. He took some of his favorite movies and, you know, launched them, um, and he put them on video. There's some movies like Switchblade Sisters, which uh, is it's cool. You got uh, some, some good foreign movies, some just whacked out kung fu movies. And then this one is a high energy, crazy movie set in Detroit, uh, Detroit 9000. Super cool movie. Super, super cool movie. Uh, as you can see, Quentin Tarantino's Rolling Thunder Pictures. Uh, starring in this is um, Alex Rocco, who, you know, you'll definitely recognize Alex Rocco from TV, movies from 70s and 80s, even into the 90s. Um, a guy named Harry Rhodes, uh, uh, Vonetta McGee, Herb Jefferson Jr., and Ella Edwards. Now, they may not sound like anybody you know, but some of these people you see and you, and you know. Um, 
This was directed by Arthur Marks, and um, it's basically, th this is all it is. This was a, an early DVD release. Uh, it's just got basic mono sound and widescreen and stuff, but that's all you need. It's a super movie. I was really impressed with this. I found this r really good price on eBay and uh, had to snag it, but definitely good crime movie. Um, super good. And uh, like I said, uh, Jim Brown uh, did a did a series of movies. He was he was very popular in the '70s with movies, and he he made a he came out as a character named Slaughter. Um, he he's a let's see, let's give you some impro um, some info impro info into who he was. He's an ex Green Beret sergeant, and he comes back home. And he, he sets out to get the mafia, who's kind of took over the, the streets of where he's from. Um, he's after, you know, he's after his family. Um, he ends up having to travel to South America, yada, yada, yada. But anyways, this is a double feature uh, of, of the Slaughter movies. Uh, Slaughter and then Slaughter's Big Ripoff. Now, out of these two... One was released 72 and one 1973. I'm a big fan of Slaughter's Big Ripoff. Great movie. Super cool. This is an older DVD, MGM, um, early 2000s DVD release. I think it's on Blu-ray. And uh, it's definitely a movie. I'll, if I come across it in the future, I'll definitely pick it up. But Slaughter's Big Ripoff is a super fun movie. Uh, the first one's pretty good. But it's very low budget, and um, it's really, I, I like it, but it's not one of my favorites. Um, Slaughter's Big Ripoff, uh, it's a, when a gunman in a plane tries to pull a flyby on Slaughter. It kind of opens up that way. Uh, he knows uh, his battle with the mob and the corrupt cops isn't over. So this is kind of a continuation from the first movie. So he goes head to head with them, fighting these guys, and it's just a series of just super, super cool scenes. I mean, Slaughter is like the coolest man. He's like the coolest guy in this movie. Uh, definitely, if you can find Slaughter's Big Ripoff, get it. But if you can find this dual pack, this is a great intro to uh, the Slaughter movies. So yeah, Jim Brown and Slaughter. And finally, guys. Uh, the next one is a uh, Warner Archive Collection uh, DVD release. Now, this stars a guy that you would see um, all through the 70s, 80s, and 90s and stuff, um, Bernie Casey. And he was in a lot of, like, black, you know, centric movies. He was in a lot of other, you know, mainstream movies and stuff. Um, he stars in one of my favorite movies from back in the day when I was a little kid. Um, I'm going to get you sucker, which is basically a tribute and kind of a kind of like a uh, just kind of a send up of all those crime black exploitation movies and all those different stuff. It's kind of like the airplane style, kind of making fun of it and stuff. Bernie Casey is in it. Now, this is a cool movie. It's called Hitman. He stars in this. Now, um, now Bernie Casey plays a guy named Tyrone Tackett. He's a big he's a big dude in Chicago. He's living his own life. He's he's got his crew. He, he's getting by. He's he's making money. Doesn't really tell you how he's getting by or what he's doing for money. He's just well off. But he's a good guy. He's down to earth. Um, he gets the phone call that his um, his mom or his his brother was, was killed. So he's come. He comes back to L. A. to you know for the funeral and everything. And instantly he gets gets caught up in what's going on and he, he wants to find out before he leaves how did his brother die and why now this is actually a kind of a remake of a movie starring michael kane that came out just a few years before this one um what is it uh, oh man what's it i can't believe it. i should i should have brushed up on my um research before I film this but you know you guys love my videos like this um gosh what was it Michael Caine uh set in Brit set in England um god do I have it back here oh man 
what's it called? What's it called? I'll put it on the screen down here, what it is. But it's basically a remake of that uh, starring Bernie Casey. And man, it's a fun movie. I got this without having really any prior info on it and stuff. I didn't know what to expect. Got it dirt cheap, uh, brand new. Uh, it stars one of my favorite uh, actresses from this from this time period and in all these movies, Pam Greer, who would go on to be in Jackie Brown, Quentin Tarantino's movie in 1990, what was it, 96, 95, 96, 97. Uh, Pam Greer, man, love Pam Greer. Um, but she's in it. This is one of her maybe... Uh, this is where she's kind of moving up on the ladder. She, I would say she's down here, like with movies like The Big Bird Cage and stuff. This would be kind of her middle, middle section. And then she'd move up to starring in movies like Foxy Brown and Coffee and stuff like that. And we'll get into her later on in the series. But right now she was in Hitman and she was cool. Uh, she was pretty cool. But, you know, she, she kind of goes out wrong, but... Man, I, I just love a Pam, a Pam Greer movie, but uh, this movie really belongs um, to Bernie Casey. He really, he really takes this movie to the next level. Uh, if, if you had to compare him and Michael Caine doing the same role, it's like, man, they're both so good at this, you know, role and stuff. He's, you know, so man, so Hitman is a movie you should check out. Super cool, I believe. I believe it's on Blu-ray. Don't quote me. Uh, I, I believe I found it on DVD because I, it was a little more economical. And uh, but yeah, check this out. I, I didn't get it to be just this snobby collector. I got. I, I wanted to see the movie. I'm a fan of the movies. So if I have to get a a 20 year old DVD to see the movie, I will. You know, I'm not going to wait till the 4K comes out. I'm going to watch the movie because that's what I'm into. So yeah, there you go, guys. Hitman. Now, Hitman came out. Let me let me tell you when did it come out? 1972. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, I got this stack of stack of movies here. This this what we'll call this black exploitation, aka exploitation movies of the 70s, part one. These are some great movies, guys. I highly recommend out of this list if you really had to get a movie you really really wanted to check one out that's a lot of fun out of all these i would say uh slaughter's big ripoff is definitely one to get if you can find detroit 9000 check detroit 9000 out can't go wrong with that and uh, of course, the Mac, you got to go with that. Actually, I should have said Eddie Murphy. I think, was it Eddie Murphy? Uh, wasn't, uh, there was a Netflix, uh, made for Netflix movie, uh, basically showing the Mac. Wasn't it the Mac or was it? Um... Anyway, there, there's a cool series on there. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you had to get just come down to just three out of these seven, these three would be the ones to find first and stuff. But, you know, if you're wanting to go way out and just get the most craziest movie, Mandingo, Mandingo is probably down your in your wheelhouse, okay? But, yeah, I hope you guys like this. This is just some really cool movies. Um, I, can't, I can't not think of Quentin Tarantino when I watch these movies because they were such a big influence on him. Uh, especially with when he uses Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction, and you know, like that co that whole vibe of their killers, and they got this dialogue going on. It, a lot of this is comes from these movies and stuff, and you, you'll kind of get on the vibe of these movies and stuff. And you know, it's not all about pimps and ho prostitutes and this and that. It, it's just some of the stuff that's kind of mixed up in these storylines. So check them out and all that. So I hope you liked this episode, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Give me some comments on what you think, think about these. If there's some that maybe uh, I haven't shown yet, uh, comment on it. 
Um, I've got some more coming down the tube. I got. I just don't want to make a 50 DVD episode, so I'm going to split these up. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe and check out my past videos. I believe I'm up to like 200 episodes and everything. And I'm coming up on a year. Uh, next month will be a year of my channel making these videos and stuff. So I've, I've really kind of come around from the first videos I did to now. Um, I'm nowhere near as professional as some of the guys that I watch and like and stuff but I'm, I'm i'm chugging along just doing my thing so it, check them out if anything you'll laugh at them uh and stuff but hopefully you'll see what i'm what i'm showing the videos and the movies to check out recommendations so check those out and um guys i will see you again in another episode uh part two of these coming up soon and lots, lots more for the channel for this new year. So see you guys later. I'm Mike, by the way. See you later.